Hi. Hi. There you are. Hello. That is so much better. Happy International <laughs> Women's Day. I'm so glad you could join us today. This oh, is great. Oh, thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. My pleasure. All right. So tell me, okay, tell me a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? I uh, I was born and raised in the Philippines. So I, and I came here in the United States when I was 24. So, wow. yes. Wow. I went so to college in the Philippines and I came here and um, to uh, finish my master's and uh, Johnny trapped me here and then we go back home. <laughs> so here I am. Oh, that is so not a bad place to be in. No, not a bad place to be in. But, you know, so your perspective on money and finance is going to be very different than a lot of people here. So I, I really want to know, what is your earliest memory of money and finance? Well, well, to give a little bit more background, I grew up in the province. So when I say I grew up in the Philippines, I didn't grow up in the city. I grew up in the province. And my earliest uh, introduction with money is actually realizing we didn't have enough. So it's always been scarce. But... Um, the, I think the most important introduction for me is though, even though we didn't have enough, I was witness to two women who actually worked what very little they had and built a thriving business to raise their children. So I w watched growing up my mother who did it for us and my gr uh, paternal grandmother who actually raised seven children, put them all through college and then retired out of her business and chose another business to retire because that's her definition of relaxing. So yes, I was, um, yeah, that's, that's my most important uh, um, experience with money is just two very strong women showing who's the boss and not being bossed around. So did they actually teach you about money or was it just you watching kind of see what they did? They didn't actually teach. They were too busy making a living, <laughs> feeding their family. It was a very stressful time. So, um, especially for my mother, who was uh, raising three kids at that time, and then she had um, uh, she had a surprise baby, my my um, my youngest brother. So there were four of us. So she she was teaching by example, and I think as a as child growing up, that's a lot more effective way of teaching rather than saying because now as a parent I realize sometimes when you talk they just tune you out but then what they see is what they realize what is actually happening rather than what you're saying well that is if they're paying enough attention so absolutely actions speak more than words right absolutely so yeah for sure for sure so when you when you moved from the provinces of the Philippines and you moved to the United States. How much of a culture shock was that for you when it came to money? Let me tell you a quick story. <laughs> it's kind of funny and it's very basic. And um, I'm think, you know, thinking it's kind of embarrassing to share, but you know it's not. Because a lot, I want to I want to be able to demonstrate that a lot of us come from very simple or sometimes zero beginnings or zero knowledge, and that's okay. And uh, one of my um, mind-blowing moments is Johnny and I, um, he, uh, he uh, we went out, I wouldn't say a date, but we went grocery shopping together. So we were gonna make dinner together. And then, um, and then this lady right in front of us whips out her check and writes a check to pay for her grocery bills. And I'm like, what, they do that here? There's no such thing where I come from. You're not, you can't, I didn't even have a checking account. And I was working for three years after college. I had a, you know, a savings account, but nobody's gonna accept a check from you to pay for your groceries. So what I realized in the United States, um, financial instruments, whether it be a checking account, a mortgage, a car loan, a life insurance, what, whatever it is, mutual funds, it's a lot more accessible. And that kind of just blew my mind and opened this, you know, the gates for like, I wanna learn more of that because it's available and I have, I don't have to climb mountains and, you know, and traverse all different sorts of obstacles just so I can gain knowledge. And that's like, okay, give me some more. And so that kind of started it. Gotcha, gotcha. Now you're in the field of finance, is that correct? 
Yes. What do you do? Well, uh, I am now a thin man, I've been an office manager for an engineering, mechanical engineering company here in Hawaii for this year is going to be my 11th year. And then prior to that, I was a financial advisor for two and a half years. And so now in my current career, I manage everything pretty much that doesn't involve mechanical engineering, whether that's internal bookkeeping um, for our taxes, state taxes and um, our 401k plans, our retirement plans. So anything that's not um, mechanical engineering, that would be my job. Cool. And what inspired you to get into the field of finance then? What in Actually, that's a very interesting question because um, when I was in college, I, um, I was a business uh, economics major and that's like a, a mix between economics and business. And I wasn't really drawn into finance and accounting off the bat, maybe because it was the lack of exposure to different careers. But then um, when I came here, because knowledge is so easily accessible and then I could try new things a lot easier. Uh, it just it just opened my mind and I um, and I realized I like it and I didn't realize I would like accounting and bookkeeping and keeping tabs of money until I started uh, my career as an office manager for this firm and I'm like hey I like this kind of detail and I didn't realize I like um, financial planning until um, I, I started working with financial planners and I'm like, hey, I like doing this. It's just um, it's just the trying part of it that I never realized I would latch on until I actually step my foot in the door and, and, and just see for myself. Oh, well, there you go. And how, how has that changed your life being making that choice and transition? How has it changed your life? I was just thankful that I was introduced to finance at a very right point you know in the, the I think I, I mentioned in my video at the time in my life when it mattered the most and um, at the time what I learned about finance is our relationship with money um, changes over time where I came from you know from humble beginnings and working my way up through school and started to work and being financially independent over the years in the beginning it's all about making more making more and, and um, thinking that having more money is, is going to allow me to do a lot of stuff, which is true. But then as I progress in my career and in life, you realize the presence of money and the flow of it doesn't necessarily make you financially secure. And having money doesn't necessarily make you free. And so, learning about finance and different financial instruments and different ways of earning money just gave me options on how to manage making it and how to manage it when i have it so that it doesn't just leave you know in an instant so wow. yeah in that manner that being in finance changed my life tremendously cool. yeah. yeah so true well, that's great. Now, do you trade in the stock market? I do. You do. And from what I hear, you're the one that got Johnny into it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Well, I've been meaning to uh, get into trading um, very early on because um, I, I was introduced to it initially at school when um, our professor asked us to uh, open a paper trade. And so I've been meaning to, you know, to, to start doing it, but I just kind of didn't know how. And then um, I got pregnant with um, our youngest child, Summer, and I can go back to school. And so I'm like, okay, let me find something to do while I'm pregnant, you know, just something to keep my mind busy. And I got into, um, into the day trading because my background is fundamental, not technical trading. And so I'm like, oh, maybe I'll, I'll give technical trading a chance. And that's um, when I got introduced to swing trading and day trading and and so at that time, Johnny was looking for something else to do after when he retires. And so I told him, get on with it. And he met Jeremy and the rest is history. There you go. There you go. Now you, so you started in a business, in a business uh, 
field and then you venture off into the accounting financial field mm -hmm. do you think other women can do this or do you think that it's it's only catered to certain individuals no anybody can do it women men anybody can do it so if i can do it coming from the dusty fields of my province anybody can do it it's just a matter of the mindset and um you know realizing what you don't know and finding out ways how to do it cool. so that's so cool it is so true and now again because you came from a, a different country um, was there any kind of a myth around money that you needed to kind of explode or get rid of that has that you, you fought and you've changed? That it's complicated. Yeah. And I had um, where I was coming from when I was a little girl dreaming about what success looks like. I always thought, oh, this, um, you know, the image of a woman in power business suits. But it's not like that at all. And um, that's one of the myths. Like when you're up in the corporate, you're climbing the corporate ladder, you've made it. And it's it's a common belief where I came from because, you know, being the province, you first look at the city as your first step to, you know, getting to be successful. And so you have these images in your head and that's one of it. It's not, you know, being successful as a woman is not in a power suit, not having a, a fancy office. It could be, it was in the form of my mother who had a notebook and a pen. Same thing with my grandmother. She had a notebook and a pen, did their, you know, their math, add and, you know, and subtract and did, did their books. Just like that, it comes in different forms and it can be compl as complicated as an elaborate spreadsheet and, it's, and it can be as simple as pen and paper. Wow, so then, true. Yeah, and then I think it's not, um, I think the second one, is, this is one of my favorites. It's, it's not a myth though, but it's common saying when we get into finance or get into something new like trading, day trading, um, swing trading, one of the favorite terms is it's like drinking through a fire hydrant. And um, it's not one of my favorites. I told Johnny this one, um, one day and I said, well, who says you have to stand in front of it and drink right off of the fire hydrant? Why can't you just you know, take, I'm just going to take my chair, get a pitcher and get a little pretty teacup and, you know, take water from the fire hydrant, pour a little bit in my cup and sip it in leisure. It doesn't have to be so overwhelming. We can manage our time and we can make it suit based on our lifestyle. So it doesn't have to be the same way as everybody's doing it. So, yeah, well, that, that's that is so one of the beauty of trading. That is so, so good. That is so good. Now, before we, we before we end this, okay, any advice to women that are looking to enter the field of finance or trading? Well, this can this question can be answered in different ways. And one is to be technical, which, oh, I love what you and Arabia brought to the table. But I think um, for me um, personally, I think it was a mindset that kind of, um, um, help me have the courage and 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 um, I would say confidence to pursue it is um, when I start defining success in my own terms and not by how it's defined by others and I would like you know um, all you people who are watching men and women to do the same because it's not fair to compare ourselves and our progress to other people and it's not fair for us to judge other people as well based on our own accomplishments because each of us are different we have our own progress and um, we have our own strengths and um, and we should focus on that and tailor our experience through that and so when we do that then we start to accept what we can do and we start to accept what we cannot do and we can work our way through those challenges in our own terms. And I think um, to me, that's that's one of the biggest aha moment. And for me starting, I'd like to give a shout out to you, Tracy, because when I um, <clears throat> started trading finally, after putting it off for several years, one of my biggest aha moments, it was mind blowing, was listening to when you were relatively new, um, a real life tr trading, when you started mentoring, I didn't know you and then I was listening to one of the interviews. I think when, that was your when Jeremy interviewed you. 
And he asked you a question about trading because uh, you said you were just trading hammers. And I think he asked you, what if it's like this? It's not so much the question, but it's the way you answered it. And you just said, it's it stuck with me. And you said, no, I don't have to take that trade. I don't have to. It's not in my plan. And it's not so much the word, but it's just the conviction. You know, it's this is my plan. This is my journey. I own it. And and you grow depending on the path that you make for yourself. And I think that was powerful. Oh, 100 percent. 100 percent. Well, Irene, I am I'm just thrilled that I had a chance to interview with you and I look forward to talking to you in the future.